Meet Joe and Gabby. Both grew up in low-income communities, attended the same low-performing high school, graduated with a 3.5 GPA, and are starting their higher education journeys at their local community college. There is one key difference. Joe is white and Gabby is Latinx. As they begin their studies, they enter an educational system with statistical differences in how students of different races and ethnicities are treated, even those that come from identical socioeconomic backgrounds. The assessment test placed both in developmental English. The counselor recommended that Joe take the Pilot English 101 class with a supplemental learning community, while Gabby stick with the developmental English course explaining that it's great practice for ESL students. Gabby has been speaking English since birth. Joe loved English 101. Reading books by Tobias Wolf and Jeanette Walls that tackled issues affecting low-income white communities resonated with Joe. Gabby related to some of the assigned essays, but felt that none really spoke about the Latinx experience. This puzzled Gabby. More than half the students in the class are Latinx, Surely the instructor could have chosen some Latinx authors. And to make matters worse, when the class discussed the only essay by a Latinx author, the instructor turned to Gabby and asked, What do you think, Gabby? Out of the top 100 texts assigned in English classes at higher education institutions across the country, 88 are by white authors, 10 by black authors, and one each by a Native American and Latinx author. Joe felt at home at college. The instructors were supportive. Most were white, like Joe, and their educational experiences matched Joe's. But Gabby noticed that most of the Latinx adults were clerical staff and groundskeepers. Few were on the faculty, administration, or on the walls in portraits. Faculty of color are underrepresented in higher education. Gabby and Joe both showed interest in becoming engineers. But when Gabby expressed that interest, a counselor suggested Gabby look into the HVAC program. The pursuit of STEM degrees disproportionately favors white students. Five years later, Joe transferred to the flagship state university. Gabby is still at the community college, credits shy of completing a degree. The odds are in Joe's favor. In fall 2016, UC Berkeley, for example, admitted 1,138 white and 713 Latinx transfer students from the California Community Colleges. At the Center for Urban Education, our research shows that the disparity in their college experiences are manifestations of institutionalized racism. We have found that higher education's mission to provide all students with equal educational opportunity is often stymied by taking for granted presumably race-neutral policies and practices that in reality confer unearned advantages to white students like Joe and compound disadvantages for racially minoritized students like Gabby. Left unexamined, these policies and practices perpetuate racial inequities. Using the methods of critical action research and critical inquiry, we help college practitioners identify areas of racial inequity on their campus, uncover how institutionalized racism is embedded in college policies and practices, recognize racialized patterns in their actions towards students, and remediate policies and practices in order to close equity gaps. Our work empowers practitioners to become equity-minded change agents who have the critical consciousness, will, and know-how to combat institutionalized racism and bring about racial equity.